So um, with each of these named thermodynamic processes, there are some quick things you can get. If it's an isochoric process, the very first thing you should remember is this, that isochoric means the same volume. Uh, choric comes from, I forget the actual Greek word. It comes from the Greek word meaning place. Um, so it means, you know, same place, same volume, same space. So change in volume is zero. And that leads to work done always being zero for isochoric processes. Because work done in the context of the thermodynamic processes with the gas is uh, so small amount of work done is pressure times small change in volume. No change in volume, no work done. So that gives the answer to one of these um, immediately. And the rest is a matter of figuring out, okay, uh, how do I use the given information, change in pressure, and I guess the volume where it's at, that might be relevant. How do I use that information to uh, figure out the remaining quantities? That is the internal energy change and that heat transfer change. And there's a second thing that's uh, useful to remember always. Uh, I think especially because it's a little bit different from how it's approached in, I think, chemistry. Because if you're coming from chemistry mindset, I think when you see heat, it's very easy to think automatically about calorimetry. And my suggestion would be registered urge. <laughs> and instead, think first about the thermo, uh, first law of thermodynamics, that the change in internal energy is given by net heat transfer minus the work done by the system. And this is the expression where you can consistently find the net heat transfer into the system. Because the work done can almost always be found directly from mechanical considerations. Here we did, we got zero almost immediately. And the change in internal energy is if you have some information to find something that relates to temperature, then change in internal energy comes rather quickly from the, um, the equipartition theorem, that it's a degree of freedom over two and KBT, or uh, for change, it would be change in temperature. So both the work and energy has a fairly direct, direct way of finding them uh, in almost any thermodynamic process question. So that leaves heat as the one unknown in this equation that you can almost uh, always consistently find. So, so, so I'm going to kind of go in order here, find the change in energy first. And then, um, and then I guess um, in this question, because work done is zero, change in energy should be uh, heat transfer. So now reading the question carefully again, I don't see any mention of temperature. I do see pressure and volume. And that's where um, it's good to remember the ideal gas law. Um, so whenever you are dealing with the thermodynamic system, almost always you are going to be interested in three dynamical quantities, pressure, volume, and temperature and the single equation that relates to those three dynamical quantities is the ideal gas law. Pressure times volume is equal to number of molecules times Boltzmann constant times the temperature. And very often you want, you can almost, uh, um, almost always you can get away treating these terms as one unit because it's this exact same combination of quantities that occurs in change in internal energy. So you can kind, I'm, I don't know if I would always write this, but you can kind of write this change in internal energy as, um, so I do have to watch out for this. So D over two times change in pressure times volume using this ideal guess law here. And that's gonna be the approach that I take. So um, my volume doesn't change here. So I'm gonna um, 
just leave the volume here. So this expression here for the purpose of this question will look like, let's see here, monatomic. So my degree of freedom is three. So three half times the volume that's constant times change in pressure. So, and so, you know, I don't even need the Boltzmann constant. So it looks like all the numbers are given in um, SI units. So let me just uh, um, put in the numbers in SI units and uh, type it in there. Where can I? Uh, maybe here. Okay. That's all of it. Um, okay. <laughs> so pressure. Um, uh, let me do this. Uh, three halves times the volume. Me cubic meter is the basic SI unit. So I'll just type that in 0 0.09. That's the volume times change in pressure. I'm just going to do this difference in my head for 490 kilopascal. So it's a 490 and pascal is the basic SI unit, which means I need to um, express this as 490 times 10 to the power of 3 pascal. So um, multiplying that all through, the mm, that seems a little high, but I think that's right. Um, yeah, so the change in internal energy is 66.15 um, uh, kilojoule or, you know, 66,150 uh, joule. And I think that comma is fine. I'll leave that in. And uh, heat from the first law of thermodynamics and the work of being zero, heat transfer should be the same. So let me submit here and good. Okay, so the first one took a little bit of time. I'll try to go a little bit quicker with the remainder of the three uh, single process questions. And what I want to highlight here before I move on is that for every one of these questions, you are going to be relying on the first law of thermodynamics, mostly to find the heat in most cases. And this uh, expression for the internal energy and ideal gas law. And this is sort of what I mean, um, mechanical to the point of being tedious, because it's the exact same set of expressions that you rely on time and time over again. So, and that's why I'm, I'm providing a, additional practice, hoping that uh, getting that additional practice will show you just how repetitive it is. <laughs>